Overcoming Russocentrism in Academia by Dismitri Pavatoru um, in New Eastern Europe. Basically, uh, the point is that both of these studies are examining other Eastern European countries, in particular post-Soviet countries, still in from the vantage point of Russia and then looking at them rather than looking at these countries' autonomy on their own. So that's basically the point of the article, is we need to stop looking at these other countries in academic research and in academic um, courses through the lens of Russia interacting with these countries and give more autonomy to these specific countries. I think the central point is right. Russia dominates the politics of that region. So when you're teaching people a course on the region, you kind of have to start with Russia, right? Um, so I don't know if there's any way to to deal with... Like, would you, in your opinion, and in your opinion, Philip, would you be doing, doing a disservice um, by saying, okay, we're going to start with, like, Belarus as a central point and then examine everybody else in the region based on Belarus. Well, yeah, it wouldn't make much sense with Belarus because, you know, it's <laughs> if you're going to examine it in terms of... All right, whatever, it's Kazakhstan, like... Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you would... You, yeah, I think you can't discuss, like, sort of that region without... It's, it would be sort of like trying to discuss, I don't know, the history of India without talking about, like, British <laughs> colonial rule, you know what I mean? So it's, a, it's so central to what happened. And, um, I mean, I guess maybe they want to think about it through the lens of the um, colonized country instead. But, um, I mean, I think that already happens a decent amount. I don't know exactly how the situation is with the Russia ones, but yeah. Uh, yeah, where to begin? <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, if you're asking about um, countries in general, I, I, they don't really give any specific academic uh, ideas here, so I, I don't quite know because I haven't studied like Russian studies or Eastern European studies at the university, so I don't know exactly what that experience is like. But yeah, I can agree in in a general principle. If you want to study the history of Eastern Europe, or you want to understand the uh, self consciousness of the peoples of Eastern Europe, obviously you cannot just talk about Russia because it's not only the Russian people there; it's not only the Russian nation there, um, and also the history obviously doesn't involve only Russia. You still have to talk about Russia. Obviously, it's the most successful state in Eastern Europe if we just look at it in terms of power, so and influence, right? So you have to talk about Russia to begin with, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's in that general sense, I agree with the sentiment of trying to understand it. But again, I, I, I agree with William that I, I don't know if that's being neglected in a sense. I mean, the self-consciousness is definitely neglected, but I don't think we even understand um, uh, Russian consciousness and how they view themselves as well very well in the West. I mean, so I don't really know how much progress we have there in terms of Russocentrism, I think is just something that we don't understand of other nations that don't think the same way. Um, so that's one thing. As far as historical things, I think that's an obvious point. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess later on it gets to talk about realism and actual academic positions where supposedly there's this Russocentrism. But in terms of the general point that he starts off with, yeah, I think I agree with that. Yeah, I guess I think I would I would say this article would have more legitimacy if it was talking more about like um, discussions and like it was more focused on maybe media attention and um, the way that you know stories from other countries are given space of the, in the news and um, the things that people are kind of pushed to care about. Right, like you don't ever hear, you would never see a CNN headline about Latvia or about um, Tajikistan, right? Unless Russia invaded one of those countries, 
Yeah, I was about to say maybe it's good we don't get headlines for for them because uh, you know the countries we are talking about right now are maybe not countries that want to be in the newspapers to begin with. No, but you know what I mean. Like, just if you go on YouTube, right, and you're looking at your feed, and you're know, just like Eastern Europe, right? I mean, even this this newspaper, um, New Eastern Europe, which is uh, supposed to be a a news organization dedicated to the politics of Eastern Europe. I'd say about 75% of the headlines were about Russia. And even the ones that were about like Georgia and Armenia were just about how those countries are becoming closer to Russia. Um, so I do wonder, I, I think it is legitimate to make the case that like the internal affairs and the history of other countries are not getting enough attention now i don't know if that's because people don't care about that like maybe it's that people don't give a shit about you know ukrainian history or you or latvian history or, or lithuanian history they just like they they literally give you shits um and that's why they're not doing it or it's they don't give any shits because the groundwork from the bottom up hasn't paid any attention to it so their mindset of thinking about the world and, and global politics um, is geared toward, is kind of programmed to wanting to pay attention to the major powers, Russia, China, India, the US, um, but not these smaller countries. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I think with the media media component is much more relevant and also much more uh, um, something that you can actually change and talk about without it sounding a little bit silly, like as you were saying in academia, it's like <laughs> choosing our academia or what we teach in order to influence geopolitics is <laughs> a little yeah. strange. Well, I think uh, even with the Ukraine war, I mean, we saw that people didn't know anything about Ukraine before the Ukraine war. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know where where it's on the map. Now people know cities, right? They, they know some history, so... They didn't know it was a separate language. Right, exactly. So you see these uh, sorts of things. Uh, but but again, it's, 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 it's this thing where, you know, how much is it a problem? I mean, obviously, we would like everybody to know more about the world in general, but it's just the way we're structured, right? We have a limited set of things that we can know. And I mean, again, like, we're talking about Eastern Europe here, I mean, because it's close to us, right? So in terms of like politics, maybe you should know something about it. But for example, if we say, what do you know about, you know, Nepal or something, <laughs> right? Or Bhutan, like people are like, what? <laughs> right. So it's, it's again, you could make the same argument there about, well, it's just India and China. Like, why are we not talking about these smaller nations? Um, mm -hmm. And I think you're actually doing a lot to counter this because of those um, videos uh, that you have about the elections. Right, I thought those were quite interesting because it was like, oh, there's actual like political movements and I ideas growing in other countries that I didn't, you know, I'm not keeping track of, obviously. Mm. Yeah, you're doing your part. <laughs> <laughs> but you made an interesting remark about like, we're not doing, there's no ethical harm we're doing by not talking about these countries. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's like a direct Do you ethical harm. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's any ethical harm being done. I mean, like, all right, let's take, let's take uh, Bulgaria. I'm not going to say anything about the politics of Bulgaria. I'm just... Well, I was about to say maybe you want to use a different example if you want me to be objective <laughs> about what I say. <laughs> well, I, that's the point. I don't want you to be objective oh, about it. Okay. Like, would you feel better if more outlets in w Western Europe and were talking about situation in Bulgaria and we're raising awareness to things that were happening in Bulgarian in like life, culture uh, if more people were knowledgeable about Bulgarian history, uh, literature etc I mean again I don't think, I understand why they're not right so that's kind of the thing, obviously would I like it? Sure, I mean what kind of person would like people knowing more about their culture <laughs> I don't know if anybody who's like against that idea but it's just not i understand why it's not prevalent i mean even with people who do articles on bulgaria or i would assume this goes for other countries as well um 
it, it is interesting that even people who supposedly would do a lot of research fall into these sort of traps where they don't actually understand the perspective of the people living there. So even if people like that, you know, have this, what, what was it called in the article, like Orientalism, right? This perspective, Western perspective, and there's journalists whose job it is to actually go there and research it. I mean, how much are we going to expect of, of ordinary people, right? Again, this was about academia to begin with, but uh, but it's kind of the same. Yeah. Well, I think you do raise an interesting observation when you're talking about Okay, but how much do people actually know about like Russian people, right? Like these countries, China, Russia are huge. And the viewpoints differ a lot. And there's a lot of different parts of Russia, right? Like. And we're not exactly friendly with them in terms of like, I know people who are interested and have gone there and actually research it. But I mean, even with countries who are closer to the West in terms of like, I don't know, Hungary or something, you, you know, people just don't know much about them, even though it's, you can easily go there and, you know, uh, start to actually learn something about the culture. But even then, it's like people don't understand the actual like perception that those countries have of the world and of themselves. And I think it's understandable why. I mean, it's quite difficult to get a d different perspective from your own. Well, like, so... The point I'm trying to get at is, like, what are we actually studying or learning about when we are studying these things? Like, it seems like we're not actually, particularly when we're focused on geopolitics, we're not actually learning about these countries. Like, it's not like when you take a class on Russian politics, you're not, like, actually doing a deep dive into the Russia psyche and all of these things in Russian history and all of these different authors and all of these different things. What you're really doing is you're getting a perspective on how Russia has influenced the world around you, right? And the major events that have kind of shaped the world, you know, the, the, the Russian government and political movements in Russia that have shaped the world around it, right? So it seems like what this article is advocating for, you know, this deeper knowledge of other Eastern European countries, um, you can make the same argument for Russia and, and China because the energy is not necessarily going into understanding everything about these countries. It's just about how do these countries affect the world. Uh, In other words, how do they affect us? How do they affect us? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like our, our friend Anshin, as evidenced by this the last podcast, right? We have no idea, you know, what ordinary Chinese people actually are thinking, right? And and news or news outlets and stories that we get in the West about China, and we think we know stuff about China because of that, could be interpreted. It could be viewed in an entirely different way through ordinary people in China, right? And they could have an entirely different perspective. So we may think we're knowing something about this country, but we don't actually know, we don't actually understand it from, you know, we're not actually taking steps to look at it from their lens. Yeah, within their perspective. Yeah, exactly. And I think basically the article touches on a much made more major issue that it doesn't like ever explore right i mean i think it starts off that way but then it goes into another area which we'll discuss probably soon but <laughs> this idea that um that you're talking about and that i think we're all talking about like understanding actually the self-consciousness and the understanding that the people in those countries have I, I just don't think we i don't even know if we strive to do that right especially if we're talking about just political courses i mean i think they're just as you said they're about uh, how those countries act on the political stage, right? It's not about how they perceive the world or, or any like deeper motivations of, about why they do that. Maybe history courses are closer to that. Maybe, um, and, and you know, there are people who like specialize in certain countries and those people are, are going into the country doing ethnographic, sociological studies of those countries, right? And it's not just Russia, 
right? You have professors who specialize in Baltic, you know, politics, specialize in Balkan politics. Um, it's just when you're teaching a wide course on politics and you're covering Eastern Europe and most of the time, right, you're, you don't have two years to just, you know, go to everybody goes to all the countries in Eastern Europe, you probably have in these courses like a week max to cover it, right? And so you can, there's only so much you can do in those courses, it, right? Yeah, from what I've seen, if we're talking about like the Balkans, for example, the people who have the best understanding are people who just live there. Live there. I mean, like I'm talking about like Western journalists, for example, like they would actually go there, they, they travel around the countries, they normally like stay in some, you know, Belgrade or Sofia or whatever, and they actually listen to the news there and they see what the people talk about on the street. And they're the closest I've seen to actually capturing it. But a lot of the times I would read the articles which just seem completely outlandish, right? right? It, it, it just, it's clear that it's, it, you're taking one perspective and then you're like imposing it on a, on a different situation. And that's easier to do where you're just taking your own perspective and you're seeing, okay, how does this situation, how can I categorize it in my perspective? And the opposite of that would be to learn a completely different perspective and see how things categorize when you look at it from that point of view. Yeah. But that's completely like, that's very difficult to do because you actually have to understand why they're viewing it that way and construct it in your, in your mind. And that's more difficult to do than just figuring out, oh, okay, so I have like, you know, I have a category for bad things and I have a category for good things. I'm obviously oversimplifying. And then you just go into a new area and you're like, okay, in this country, who are the bad ones, who are the good ones, according to my preconceived notions of those categories. Yeah.